Go on, please. Suzanne Longland dominated her sport and transcended it to become one of the biggest global superstars of the 1920s. This is the story of France's tennis and style icon, a teenage prodigy who went on to beat almost everyone she played, thanks to unrivaled grace and court craft. Yet she was also a maverick who sauntered onto court in a fur coat and full makeup and sipped cognac at change of ends. No wonder they called her La Divine, the goddess. Longland's elegance around a tennis court was astonishing. The legacy of early years of tough coaching from her disciplinarian father, Charles. He was said to have placed handkerchiefs on the court as targets, folding them smaller and smaller each time she hit them and eventually replacing them with coins. By the time she won her first big tournament, the World Hard Court Championships, at the age of just 15, Longland could find every inch of the court with apparent ease. She was one of the first women to serve overarm, but it was her movement that caught the eye. She was as balletic as she was athletic. As contemporary writer Ernest Crawley put it, whether Longland's objective is the ball or merely changing sides, she reminded you of the movement of fire over prairie grass. That fire was destructive and largely unbeatable too. Only the suspension of tennis during the First World War halted her progress. Between 1919 and 1926, Longland lost just one singles match in eight seasons and had an unbeaten run of 116 matches. In a career spanning just 12 years, she won six Wimbledon titles, two French Open trophies and the 1920 Olympic singles gold in Antwerp. She was just as merciless in doubles and mixed doubles, winning 21 Grand Slam crowns overall. British tennis historian Alan Little collated Longland's amateur win-loss record at 341 to 7, giving her an incredible winning percentage of 98%. No player, male or female, has ever been as dominant. The 1920s was an era of global celebrity, thanks to the emergence of Hollywood and international newsreels. And few stars were as charismatic as Longland. When she played Dorothea Lambert Chambers in the 1919 Wimbledon final, they had to double the capacity of centre court. It is said that Longland's popularity was a factor in the All England Club's 1922 decision to move from Warple Road to its current much larger site in Church Road. It helped that Longland enjoyed controversy, frequently trash-talking opponents, smashing rackets and earning a reputation as a diva. She was the perfect sports celebrity for a fashion-conscious era. From her signature knee-length dresses, daringly worn without sleeves, to the trademark headache band headband over her fashionable bob haircut, she created new trends. She was friends with film stars and royalty, and she loved the celebrity parties of the day. Longland thought nothing of including drinking, smoking and dancing in her pre-match preparation. When officials complained about her vials of cognac on court, she soaked sugar cubes in brandy and dropped them into her water bottles instead. Nowhere was Longland more loved than in her native France. For a nation so recently battered and bruised by the horrors of the First World War, Longland was a national symbol of confidence and hope. In 1926, tickets to Longland's matches were fetching up to $50, the equivalent of $700 in today's money. Yet she and her fellow players remained unpaid amateurs. She complained bitterly about this unfairness, and at the end of 1926 she turned professional, provocatively calling it an end to the bondage and slavery of amateur tennis. Wimbledon was so incensed that it immediately cancelled her membership. After a paid exhibition tour of the US, Longland's appetite for fame dwindled and she retired from tennis altogether in 1928. She returned to Paris and went to work in a sporting goods store before starting a tennis school. In summer 1938, just as another Wimbledon was being played without her, Longland fell ill and died aged just 39. Officially, the cause was anemia, although by then she had many health problems, some perhaps caused by the excesses of her lifestyle. Longland's star burned brightly, if all too briefly, but her legacy remains. It is there in the beautiful court at Roland Garros, which bears her name, 
and in every player who dares to be different in what they wear or how they play. Like all goddesses, La Divine lives forever. <laughs>